discuss it. Vacation Bible School, that's a very exciting time. We hope you will have all your little ones come and invite the neighbors from preschool to fifth grade um, for Vacation Bible School. Uh, the book club is meeting this month. The men's group meet. Taizé service on Ju uh, June 20th. So wonderful things happening here in the church. And I would like to invite you to open your hearts and minds for worship and silence your cell phones. Thank you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. <coughs> Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, your never-failing providence sets in order all things, both in heaven and earth. Put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things which are profitable for us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading comes from Deuteronomy. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave, 
or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 81 responsively by whole verse. Sing to, with joy to the God of our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon and at the full moon, the day of our feast. He laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph when he came out of the land of Egypt. You called upon me in trouble and I saved you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Mirabah. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. Our second reading comes from St. Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of the darkness who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lift up your hearts and hear the holy gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made the way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. Jesus looked around at them with anger. He was grieved with their hardness of heart, and he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and all God's people say. Amen. <clears throat> so any of you who are tennis fans will know that the French Open is currently underway, which is one of the most important tennis tournaments in the world. <clears throat> and I don't know if you remember or not, but I remember, distinctly remember three years ago when Japanese tennis superstar Naomi Osaka surprised the world by withdrawing from the tournament. She decided to withdraw after she was fined $15,000 for refusing to participate in a press conference. She said, the truth is that, is that I have been suffering long bouts of depression and I have a really hard time coping with that. Her decision led to a barrage of criticism. Pierce Morgan called her a petulant little madam. An Australian sports journalist said, the immaturity of Naomi Osaka leaves me speechless. But other folks are more caring and compassionate and empathetic with their struggles. Tennis star Serena Williams said, I wish I could give her a hug because I know what it's like. The Bible doesn't say much about depression or mental, issue, mental health issues as we understand them. But what is considered demon possession in the Bible is often what we would consider mental health challenges and issues these days. The Bible, God's word, does speak of folks suffering from a variety of afflictions. From the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, the shortest gospel, and the first one written, <clears throat> Jesus meets people in need, and Jesus responds to real human need with compassion and action. Jesus feeds and heals and lifts people. He meets and heals physical needs, and there is a body and mind and soul connection. Physical healing and need meeting is also emotional and spiritual. Because as the, a great book says, um, the book, the body keeps score. There is a connection between all that. <clears throat> and Jesus in the Gospels is always on the side of life, even when it means challenging the status quo, as we hear today. 
Jesus cures those who are sick. He casts out demons. He cleanses a leper. He restores sight to the blind. He heals a paralytic. He launches his ministry early in the Gospel of Mark by saying, the kingdom of God has come near. Then Jesus shows that being freed from affliction, being freed from any oppression, is a sign of the kingdom of heaven. In our gospel lesson today, we have two short stories, which I encourage you to take home and read and pray through this week. In the first story this morning, Jesus and his followers, his apprentices, which is what we are also called to be, are walking through the grain fields on the Sabbath, which for Jewish folks like Jesus was and is sundown Friday through sundown or sunset Saturday. His hungry followers pluck heads of grain when a group of religious leaders called Pharisees criticized Jesus by saying, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? So Jesus, being very Jesus-y, tells a story. He tells a story about David and his companions breaking the laws of the temple to eat bread when they are hungry. And then Jesus says, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. Jesus wants him to know that the laws of the Sabbath are created to benefit God's people. When these laws are not beneficial to helping those created in God's image, they can be broken. Helping others takes priority over following religious rules. Putting skin on God's love is more important than religious legalism, more important than religiosity. <clears throat> Myself and uh, a few other folks from a local restaurant look out for a local homeless man and he panhandles enough most days to stay in one of the Roach Coach motels on Washington Avenue. And we give him some cash and toiletries. Um, and I talk to him, and we pray for one another. Um, he's not in good health. His legs are swollen and purple, which is an obvious sign of some serious medical issues. He's not someone who's going to the doctor. He's not someone particularly pleasant to look at. He is who he is. <laughs> But he is a child of God who would not and does not harm a soul. And he says to people who are the most mean-spirited to and say the worst things to him are folks leaving church on Sunday morning. That's why it's often said that the largest cause of atheism is Christians. Some Christians, not you. <laughs> in the second story from Jesus this morning, which I encourage you, in your mind's eye to imagine witnessing playing out, Jesus enters a synagogue. He sees a man with a withered hand, and he asks the Pharisees, is it lawful to do good or to do harm <coughs> on the Sabbath, to save or to kill? They don't answer Jesus. He looks at them with anger, the only time the word is used this way in the New Testament. Jesus is angry and grieved by hardness of heart. We've probably all been there when we've been hurt by someone we care about. We angry and grieve the loss and damage to the relationship at the same time. Jesus says to the man with the withered hand, stretch out your hand. The man stretches out his hand and he is healed. The kingdom of God, the kingdom we pray, come every Sunday. As seen in doing for others, saving lives and helping and healing folks, even on the Sabbath, even if we are in a hurry. Jesus makes clear that his mission is to heal the sick and cast out demons by the power of God. <clears throat> that means that in his culture and context, and the manner it translates to our modern context, is that Jesus helps and wants folks to be restored to physical, emotional, spiritual, psychological health, to wholeness. Jesus is interested in human flourishing, beloved community, and the common good. Jesus didn't just heal folks to live in isolation. Jesus is he healing as a sign of the kingdom of God, entering our daily human life in whatever manner that healing and appears. Jesus is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Now, of course, not everyone agrees. After Jesus heals the man with the withered hand, the Pharisees, the legalists, go out and conspire with the Herodians, Greek Jews who are hostile to Jesus, and against Jesus, who is also Jewish, about how to destroy him. Keeping the Sabbath was a boundary issue in the Jewish culture at the time. It was a tradition, part of the identity of God's people. But like all traditions, it can lose its original intent and impact. 
A day of rest is beneficial to us and for us. We need space to be human beings and not just human doings. So for me, after church on Sundays, I go home. I have lunch with my wife, I take a nap, um, and I spend Sunday just being, um, powered down, sometimes talking to family in other parts of the country or on the phone. And that is why on Saturday, I take Saturday off. That's my day off, with the exception of weddings and emergencies. I've learned in life that no is a complete and healthy sentence, and boundaries are healthy. Jesus warns us not to use Sabbath keeping as an excuse for being rude to the person checking us out at Publix, or leaving a cheap tip, or failing to help someone in need. In fact, Jesus gets angry when we show hardness of heart. He doesn't get angry for the puppy sins, for the little things we do and don't do. He gets angry about hardness of heart. Jesus reserves his most passionate ire in the gospel to religious legalists who talk the talk but don't walk the walk, for those who practice religiosity. Jesus gets angry when people pray pretty but live meanly with hearts of ice and stone, cold and indifferent to the suffering of others. When people claim to drink in Jesus but spit out hate. When people boast of being people of faith but rely on fear. When they claim they are Christian nationalists, which is neither in the spirit of Jesus, not biblical and not patriotic, and ignores the Sermon on the Mount. Those who preach a God of abundance but not the gospel call for sacrifice, servanthood, servant leadership, humility, and compassion for the beaten up and beaten down. <clears throat> Jesus calls us to follow him and to be moved out of our comfort zone. The Jesus of the Gospels changes things in terms of our mental, spiritual, and emotional health. The Gospel of Mark and our stories this morning make it clear that Jesus wants to heal us and save us from those things that can hurt or destroy us physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. When we respond to the gospel and follow Jesus, we choose, as it were, between two kingdoms. When we choose the spirit of the law over the letter of the law, when we live in the kingdom of God, we choose the feeding of hungry people, compassion for and care for those who are lost and broken and lonely and hurting in any way. We choose grace. We choose life. <clears throat> we choose to be people who bring healing and help into the world. We choose to be people who do good. When we're able, as we're able, for whom we're able, we choose and follow Jesus, the way of love and compassion, the way of the we over the me, the way that tells us when one member suffers, all suffer, the way of goodness and character and virtue and grace and mercy and warmth over hardness and coldness of heart. Jesus wanted healing. He wanted health and wholeness for everyone. And that's what the word salvation means. We are called to follow his example. As I shared with a young couple who we married here in the church last night, Layla and Ben, if you want to feel love, do love. If you want to feel love, do love. So as I get ready to pull this together, I would share with you the hungry disciples, the man with the withered hand, a crowd full of sick folks, they all found help and healing in Jesus. They were saved by the one who brings power and love into the midst of our daily lives and living. The one who wants to love and heal, the bomb in Gilead for all God's people, from ordinary folks to superstar athletes wrestling with mental health issues. Jesus came to bring life and to defeat the ways of death with the word of life. Jesus asked the question, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be whole? I'll share by closing that when we follow the actual Jesus of the Gospels, the actual Jesus of the Gospels, the one who put people first, we seek balance between taking care of the self and taking care of others. This is important <clears throat> because we are experiencing a mental health crisis in our country, which is also a spiritual crisis. As those who follow Jesus, we have skin in the game as we do the work of healing and helping our divided and isolating and hurting world. When we follow Jesus, we can step away and slow down to practice self-care. Jesus says, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For me, that means daily prayer time. That means working out daily, eating better, um, seeing my VA therapist once a month, seeking spiritual direction. Um, and on it goes as a way to maintain, maintain healthful, 
mental, emotional, psychological, and spiritual health, wholeness. I can't give what I'm not getting. We all need this. That's why I was proud of Naomi Osaka. She was not willing to destroy her mind, body, and soul just to win a tournament. She spoke a truth, a hard truth, to help others. Jesus wants us saved and healed and health. Jesus wants a bomb in Gilead for anything that seeks to harm or destroy. You know, after 20 years of war, the military, or at least veteran groups, are taking these issues seriously due to the effects of a long war um, whose effects were not discussed ahead of time. They're never discussed ahead of time because politicians make the decision to go to war and the people who go to war suffer the consequences especially in a country where the military-civilian divide is larger than ever. And that's why so many veterans suffered moral injury um, during the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. We asked the question, what was all the sacrifice for, only to leave the Taliban, evil personified, still in power? So we talk about those issues. We talk about the effects of war, not only on ourselves, but secondarily, those suffering post-traumatic stress, our families who often suffer much more than we do. Anyway, so three years ago, back when all this was happening to Naomi Osaka, one person trying to be a game changer was a man named Edward Jones. He was an assistant athletic director for Baylor College Football. And he said this, he said, as a black man, I understand the taboo that mental health has been and is for our community. I tried to be an example of handling your mental health so all of our student athletes can see its benefit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus came to save, to heal, to make whole, to be that bomb in Gilead. Jesus placed in caring for others first. Jesus asked the question, do you want to be well? I pray the answer for all of us, all of you as individuals, and for us as a faith community, for those who follow Jesus is yes, I want to be well, and we want to be well. Amen? peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Frank, our bishop, Glenn, our priest, and all other bishops and ministers. For all who bear the heart of the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For those in need of healing, Ray Bourne and the 
Reverend David Kennedy, Chrissy Slack, Sylvia Smith, for those who are homebound, for the safety of Joseph Haddo and all who serve abroad. Hear us, Lord. We thank you for the blessings of this life, for those with special celebrations, for those celebrating birthdays, Cindy Cooper, for those celebrating anniversaries, Jackson and Rachel Elam, Mike and Erlene Cox. Thanksgiving for all our outreach partners. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And we pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Dr. Harry Hopper. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray, <coughs> we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins, as together we share. Most merciful God. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now remembering to share the peace of those joining us online, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us share the peace of Christ. an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, and your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us all so that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And in the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through our Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Amen. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who love him more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is the Lord's will that those who desire Jesus should meet him here at this table. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Please be seated. You are all welcome at our Lord's table. Come down the center aisle, I'll give you the bread, the body of Christ. If you go to the right, you can receive the common cup. If you go to the left, you can dip the bread into the wine, or you can just come forward for a blessing. The meal is prepared, the table is set. Come and receive Jesus.
Let's share together the post communion prayer. <clears throat> Almighty and ever living God. A few brief announcements. I'd like to welcome Robert Macy, our new church musician. Uh, for those folks who signed up to serve the noontime meal at the master's table, that'll be this Tuesday at 1030. Um, Vacation Bible School will be the 10th through the 14th at our Savior Episcopal from 530 to 8. Um, tomorrow evening, they're going to have a meeting. Um, what time is that meeting, Laura, tomorrow night? 6 p.m. over our Savior Episcopal. If you're interested in volunteering or being part of our vacation joint vacation Bible school, um, Thursday, June 13th, we'll have our, our movie discussion night. We will be watching The Wizard of Oz. And then after that, we will discuss the overarching spiritual motif. And I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but come, we'll, have a, we'll watch it and have a good discussion afterwards. Um, our Ties A service is Thursday, June 20th at seven, and uh, I'm looking for four or five more people to help me uh, pack meals for the, the master's table, for the children's lunch program for the summer, and that's from nine to 12, um, Thursday, June 20th. If you're interested, let me know. You have to be able to stand for three hours and lift five or 10 pounds, um, and wear kind of clothes you don't, you don't mind getting dirty. You have to be at least eight years old, at least eight years old. So if you're interested in that ministry, um, let me know, and we will make that happen. Any other announcements I forgot? Anything for the good of the order? Always remember how short life is and how little time we have to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I'd like to invite the children down. Also, there's a 
Sunday school planning meeting downstairs immediately after worship. Um, um, come on over, guys. Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks. Peace to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Good job, guys. Good job.